ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंट वन चैप्टर वन टेक्स नाइनटीन कैन रिपीट आउट वयम तो न वितृप्याम उत्तम श्लोक विक्रमे युण्वता रस ज्ञानाम स्वादु स्वादु पदे पदे Now I'll just read verse and translation. Vayam tuna vitripyama uttama shloka vikrame yachin vatam rasagnyanam svadu svadu pade pade. Translation: We never tire of hearing the transcendental pastimes of the personality of Godhead, who is glorified by hymns and prayers. Those who have developed a taste for transcendental relationships with Him relish hearing of His pastimes. at every moment purport there is a great difference between mundane stories fiction or history and the transcendental pastimes of the lord the histories of the whole universe contain references to the pastimes of the incarnations of the lord The Ramayana, the Mahabharat and the Puranas are histories of bygone ages recorded in connection with the pastimes of the incarnations of the Lord and therefore remain fresh even after repeated readings. For example, anyone may read Bhagavad Gita or Shrimad Bhagavatam repeatedly throughout his whole life and yet find in them new light of information. Mundane news is static whereas transcendental news is dynamic. in as much as the spirit is dynamic and matter is static those who have developed a taste for understanding the transcendental subject matter are never tired of hearing such narrations one is quickly satiated by mundane activities but no one is satiated by transcendental or devotional activities uttama shloka indicates that literature which is not meant for ne science mundane literature is in the mode of darkness or ignorance whereas transcendental literature is quite different transcendental literature is above the mode of darkness and its light becomes more luminous with progressive reading and realization of the transcendental subject matter the so called liberated persons are never satisfied by the repetition of the words aham brahmasmi such artificial realization of brahman becomes hackneyed hackneyed and so to relish real pleasure they turn to the narrations of the shrimad bhagavatam those who are not so unfortunate turn to altruism and worldly philanthropy this means the mayavad philosophy is mundane whereas the philosophy of bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam is transcendental namo om vishnu padaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shrimate bhakti vedanta swaminiti namine namaste saraswate deve गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चतिदेशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रबुदीतनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासरी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वयम तो न विप्याम उत्तम श्लोक विक्रमे यृण्वता रस ज्ञा स्वादु स्वादु पदे पदे translation again we never tire of hearing the transcendental pastimes of the personality of godhead who is glorified by hymns and prayers those who have developed a taste for transcendental relationships with him relish hearing of his pastimes at every moment in shastra krishna is described as advaya advaya gyan um, advaya means in english you can translate it as non dual non dual and uh, absolute I, you can take that to mean absolute. Krishna is absolute, 
Advaya Gyan means absolute. Dvaya means two. Advaya means not two. No, no non-dual. One only. So, Supreme Personality of God, it is absolute, Advaya. That means everything in connection with Him is Him. There is no difference between Krishna and His name, Krishna and His Leela, Krishna and His Vigraha. So, because the Supreme Personality of God, it is Advaya. There are no two things. Everything is Krishna. Krishna's name is Krishna. Krishna's activities, everything is Krishna. So, because Krishna is absolute, when we discuss about Him, He is present personally. In the Srimad Bhagavatam class, Krishna is present personally. In his narration, Krishna is present personally. So, now, how to understand this? Krishna is not so easy to understand. We are told in uh, Shastra that we have to understand Bhagavad Tattva Vigyanam, we have to understand science of God. Science of God is a very deep topic because we are speaking about God. And if we know God, we know everything. So, one aspect of Him is here. It requires a lot of uh, knowledge and to be situated in a good platform to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We have to be able to understand. We have to be in Satvagun. And we need information, a lot of information. So, the Vedas He explained. So, regarding this nature of Krishna, that He is Absolute, Advaya, not different from anything, that is known by devotees only. How to understand that? One who Krishna gives the mercy will understand that Krishna is personally present. When we chant his name, when we reach perfection, we realize I am chanting Hare Krishna. Krishna is there, fully there in his name. So not so simple to understand. One has to come on Satvagun and apply his mind to understand. So now when we are discussing spiritual topics concerning Krishna, Krishna is right there. Because Krishna is Advaya, Absolute. And how is this enacted? Krishna is spiritual energy. Spiritual form of Krishna is under spiritual energy. So, when we discuss about Krishna, we come under the spiritual energy also. At that time, we are not under material energy. We all come under the spiritual energy because we are contacting Krishna. When one is... Uh, one wants to enter the sun planet, one has to have a fire body, like the sun is full of fire. And when, if one wants to enter into the water and remain there, they have to have a water body like the fishes, they have a body of water. So similarly, if we want to know Krishna, if we want to serve Krishna, one has to have a form like Krishna. One has to become Brahman, he is Parabrahman, Supreme Spiritual. So one has to come on that spiritual Brahman platform. So, the, at the time when Krishna is being discussed, that is a spiritual energy. And everyone at that time, who is sitting and hearing and their mind is there, their attention is there, they are coming on a spiritual platform. And if this is repeated again and again and again, then they come on the spiritual platform in the class, class is over, again material, then spiritual, then material. But if you continue hearing, 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 we'll come on the spiritual platform and we'll not come down. We'll remain permanently on the spiritual platform. Because Krishna is, is present in the class, and so when we perceive Him, we come on the we come free of Maya. But uh, if we do not do any activity where Krishna is the beneficiary, Krishna is the enjoyer of the sacrifice, that is a material energy, and that energy is very different from spiritual energy. It's very different. It's. Um, explained in Shastra as Maya Shakti. The Maya Shakti, material energy, has been deputed by Krishna to cause suffering to us in different ways. Because one is a punishment, one is that it's to make us get out of here. This is not a place to be. And uh, we may say, why isn't Krishna like that? Why can't we just enjoy ourselves? Why is he doing that? But we cannot enjoy without Krishna. So he's doing this out of compassion. Out of compassion, he is not, um, you can say, allowing us to 
uh, stay here and enjoy without him. So on that, uh, because of that we see that in this material world, everyone here who is in the material energy is going through suffering. Why? Because of the Maya Shakti. But why? Because Krishna wants them to get out and then they'll realize that, that they're in a situation which is not normal. The normal state for the jiva is to be engaged serving Krishna. So why doesn't he want us to be here? Because if we're here and not serving Krishna, we'll not be happy. He wants us to come back to that happy place. So the Maya Shakti has been deputed by Krishna to make us suffer. And any activity which is material, not for Krishna, that will be the result. Every activity where Krishna is the enjoyer of the result of that, or the, we can say, where he is glorified. Krishna is glorified, Krishna is honored. Oh, Krishna is in joy of the sacrifice. That is a spiritual activity. So Krishna is happy. When Krishna is happy, all the participants there are happy. Now, if we are sitting glorifying God, then that happiness is there, which is not there in the normal material platform. So this is known as Yajna Vai Vishnu. Yajna means doing activity for Vishnu. For example, cooking. Normal activity of cooking is material. If in our consciousness we say we are cooking for Krishna, that becomes a spiritual activity and we'll feel very different, very different feeling. If we, anytime someone engage in cooking for Krishna, especially on a festival, big festival day, that we are engaged in uh, you know, cooking many preparations, preparing something for Krishna, that is a special feeling that those who have cooked for Krishna will know. Cooked, especially cooked on a festival, that's more pleasing for Krishna. But generally cooking for Krishna is pleasing. So that activity comes under the spiritual energy. And what about listening to songs? If we listen to normal songs, that's a material activity. We are getting bound up. And it's planting different material thoughts and actions which have to be uh, which is binding us to the material world. Like if I'm enjoying the song, then I'm binding myself to take birth again, to listen to that song, and to, because I became attached to a song. So that is a material activity. But if we are listening to a song for Krishna, then that is a spiritual activity, and then it does not bind us. Of course, one has to be in a proper consciousness that I'm, I'm listening to the song, um, because it was, it's a uh, yajna, glorification of Vishnu, and I want to engage my ears in the service of hearing about Krishna. But if you're in an enjoying mood, then again, it's not spiritual. Work, people do work. Work is uh, nothing, not wrong, but if it's work for me the, to enjoy the result, then that is a material activity. Then we are binding ourselves to that activity, and we have to take birth again. But if that work, the result of the fruit will be Krishna, we'll get it. So then that's a spiritual activity. In the early days of the movement, the money, when the still, when the movement didn't take off, so the money was sometimes not there. So people in the ashram will go and work. Now Brahmachari is in puja, cooking. In those days, they'll go drive the taxi and raise money. But they were okay. It was uh, because all the money went to Krishna. It was not uh, like everyone else. So the whole day they were thinking, I'm working for Krishna. I hope I get more customers. I have to get more money for Krishna. So there was not, uh, nothing much happened to them. They were in a good consciousness. One of them was Jayananda. He was that time the temple president of uh, that temple. And he, he used to work all day just to collect money for the temple. And he was you know, very f favorite of Prabhupada and he was um, glorified, even now he's glorified because of that. So working, if Krishna is a result of that work, then it's not, you cannot say it's material. Of course, the best activity is if you do what Krishna wants to do. But if you're not doing that, if you're working, doing other things, but if you dedicate the fruit of that action to Krishna, then that becomes a spiritual activity. 
and one is not bound up then by that. Of, but as I said, to really please Krishna, you have to do the Navavida Bhakti, Shravanam, Kritanam. He, Krishna is given, in Bhagatam is given the nine forms of Bhakti. So one of them is not work in office, but it may be someone has to do that. Okay, in that circumstance, the result of the work can come to Krishna, then Krishna will be satisfied. How much do we take? Enough just to, set, to maintain our existence, not accumulate. So mundane and spiritual activity. Even dancing, so dancing to a material song, that is harmful, increases material desires and binds us to take birth again in this material world. But dancing for Krishna, that is different activity. That is, uh, Skanda Purana says that when one holds his hands up and dances on the tip of his toes, jumping, it, then the sinful activities leave the body like butterflies. For that you have to know what's a butterfly and you have to have gone into the forest. Butterflies are, uh, what was Titli, Titli in Hindi. Titli. Tamil? Puru. So you understand a butterfly. So a butterfly, they'll all be sitting in one place and you clap your hand or you make a disturbance, they'll all fly away at once. And suddenly that place looks different because they were having different color wings. Now that's different. So similarly, all the sins in our body, when we jump in front of the Lord and jump uh, for the pleasure of the deity, it says in Skanda Purana that our sins go away, like the butterflies leave when we clap them. Like, just they fly away, they go. So dancing for Krishna, very powerful activity, which in Kali Yuga is supposed to be very main. <laughs> main activity, dancing for Krishna. We were told by our temple person, he used to push us, dance, 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 we'll not dance like a dance. Then he said one day, dance for Krishna or you'll dance for Maya. So then we, you know, endeavored to dance for that, <laughs> for Krishna. So for the pleasure of Krishna, when it's done, it comes under the spiritual energy. The nature of the spiritual energy is Satchit Anand. If we say we are coming, coming under the spiritual energy, automatically other features are there. One feature is Sat, another is Chit and Anand. Sat means eternality. I perceive myself as a soul, not as a body. Sat, Chit, knowledge. I perceive knowledge of myself in relation to Krishna. I perceive knowledge of God, maybe not fully, but some level of comes. Sat, Chit, Anand, happiness. Happiness comes. So these three things, they come automatically in the spiritual energy. We don't have to endeavor separately. One can just do bhakti and get perfection. But because we are so fallen and our mind is so disturbed, we cultivate knowledge to stop its attraction to matter and help to evoke our bhakti. We, we hear more and we read more. But if you just chant Hare Krishna, that will be okay. But no one can do that. <laughs> It's not for, for Kali Yuga, it's not so easy to do that. So the spiritual energy has three features, Satchit Anand. And this has been, um, this is presided over by Sandini, Samvit and Hladini Shaktis, three Shaktis. The Samvit Shakti, no, Sandini, Sandini is existential energy, spiritual energy, known as uh, the Sat feature, so known as Sandini. So Sandini helps in the spiritual world, it's prop it propagates the existential, uh, that we everyone is existing, going on, because of the Sandini Shakti, even in the material world, but it's in an inferior way. Then Samvit, knowledge. In the spiritual world, everyone knows who, about God, about the soul, about everything. But here we don't know. But when we come under spiritual energy, discussing about Krishna, connected to Krishna, then these energies come in. Then we get, we, we, can, we can perceive God somehow. We are able to perceive and ourselves. So Samvit knowledge, uh, is, knowledge, is knowledge. Sandini, existential, eternality. And Hladini. Hladini is uh, happiness. The Hladini Shakti presides over happiness. So somebody who is on a spiritual, is pr a spirit, doing spiritual practice on a spiritual level, is automatically 
for, uh, instituted in happiness and having progressive idea of his relation to Krishna and having knowledge of God and himself. The relation and knowledge of the nature of the soul and God and happiness. These three things come automatically for somebody who is coming in the spiritual energy. So wherever the spiritual energy is, these three are there. Sat Chedanam. So when one participates in any spiritual activity, then automatically one is happy in knowledge and perceives himself as soul and perceives the Supreme Personality of God as present, all pervading, perceives his presence. And so they don't have to look at for these things separately. Separately look for happiness, no need. Separately get knowledge, read Vedanta, Upanishads. Yes, we can read to evoke bhakti, but we don't have to do that to know God. Because if we engage in bhakti or glorifying Krishna or working for Krishna, we automatically come under a spiritual energy. And that spiritual energy, it, it fits in, it provides what the soul is actually supposed to be in, supposed to do. Soul has to be in happiness. So he's automatically in happiness. In the spiritual energy. Soul has to be in knowledge. He's in knowledge. And soul has to know he's a soul. And he's a servant of God. That's also there. So these three things are there. Automatically for one who is in the spiritual energy. Now by hearing... Mm, yeah, so in this verse, now if you say what it says, the sages are saying that we never tire of hearing the transcendental pastimes of the personality of Godhead. That you can narrate it. So they're asking Sutta, speak to us, Bhagavatam. You can narrate it. You can narrate as much as you want. We, we, we never get tired. Don't have to stop for us. We want to hear more and more. That we never tire of hearing those who have developed a taste for transcendental relationships with him relish hearing of his pastimes at every moment. Every moment we want to hear about him. Because one who has developed a taste, he wants to hear more and more. Anything that tastes good, we want to have more of it. So this is, this is a spiritual activity. That in, within, while hearing Bhagavatam, they are perceiving God. They are happy. They're, all anxiety is gone because they perceive themselves as a soul. So even temporarily, all these things go. And if we continue hearing, hearing more and more, they'll go permanently. As it went for Parikshit Maharaj. He's exemplifying the, the Shravanam aspect of Bhakti. Attaining perfection through the Shravanam aspect. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Shukadev Goswami. He's uh, exemplifying it. So this is not an exaggeration to say that one is never satisfied by hearing spiritual literature. It's very clear to see, whoever argues, that Srimad Bhagavatam, although spoken 5,000 years ago, is still here. We personally go distributing books. The most sold book is Bhagavad Gita. I recall years ago when I was doing full-time book distribution, we get a large number of books of Bhagavad Gita, something like 300, and we'll stack it up, a huge stack that we cannot see the other side. And just as the time goes, day by day, one week, two weeks, that level comes down, then finished. And we are wondering, Bhagavad Gita is spoken here, there's so many Bhagavad Gita's in India, there's so many versions, people know Gita, why are they buying our Bhagavad Gita? Why are they buying so many? Why? Because they are not satisfied. They want to hear. Although they'll buy, maybe they'll not read because they're not pure devotees. They have to be encouraged. At that second they see us, they become excited, they buy the book. Some of them, every time they see Hare Krishna, they buy the book. They don't understand that this is a Hare Krishna, I bought the book. So once what happened, someone, we came in someone's house and then she was saying, I'm so depressed. I went through so many problems, this and this and that and that. And we heard, okay, see what you have to do. You have to read Gita. Gita will, say, will solve all your problems because we are in a material situation that's causing suffering. But if you come on the spiritual level, there's no suffering. There's no depression. So what do I have to do? She said, 
we had, you have to read Bhagavad Gita, take this book. So she took it. Then we went out to distribute books in other houses. We came back walking that side and she came out holding six Gitas. She said, I'm sorry, I have this book. <laughs> then we said, okay, then you buy it, Krishna book. She bought the book so many times, they couldn't realize that I bought the book. Then they met someone else, they bought it again, again, again. She had six. So they're not on that level to read. But still this shows that they become attracted by hearing. Hearing us, at that second they come on the spiritual platform. Okay, I'll accept Krishna. And that's practical what we have to do when we distribute books. <coughs> Bring people on a spiritual level through discussion, through tilak, through our presence. Through, and at that second then they'll take the book because that will appeal to them. On a material platform it's hard, no one will take a book. But therefore, only devotees can sell the book. When Prabhupada set up the system, book distribution, yeah, that's the idea that if you put it in the shop, who will buy? Still, the books are powerful. They will people take them, but not in the same rate as if devotees distribute them. So this is not an exaggeration to say that we are not never satisfied by spiritual topics, but material topics people are, you know, are not satisfied because we can see right now that the material books come and go. We can mention some books which were big hits before. There's a book called Iliad. It's a trilogy. It's a epic like uh, Mahabharat, but from the West, I think from Greece. And it was known widely. Do you know that book, Iliad? You heard of it? Have you heard Iliad? You heard? Two of you heard? No, of it. I know because recently I heard one podcast of Chakrapani Prabhu. He said it. He said uh, that some philosopher uh, he compared Ma Mahabharat to Iliad. In, in yeah, that yeah. Context. It is like the Iliad of the West. Uh -huh. Okay. Before that, had you heard of it? No. Okay. Generally, people don't know what's Iliad. You know, if you say Iliad, they'll think it's the name of what is the name of a dog or a city. They'll not be able to have any clue. They say, oh, name of a person. No, it's an uh, epic. Oh, okay, never heard of it. Okay, but it was so great. It was all over. Greece was at that time ruling the whole of the Western world and maybe Egypt. And, uh, you know, people would have known it, but now no one knows it because it's, it's, not, a, it's not about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Yeah, but Bhagavad Gita has spoken 5,000 years ago. There is no system to preserve it. It's just there. It remained in the society. You know, people did drawings, with the Rath and the chariot. Everyone knows this is... Krishna and Arjun, and uh, they chanted it, they gave names, you know, Panchajanya, people call their family members' names or shops, mm. and uh, Kurukshetra people go there still, but there was no concerted effort to preserve it. It's preserved. Sometimes people put something called a time capsule, in, they'll, they'll, in a container they'll put a book, or some things of their generation, their age, so that later someone can look at it and, uh, and they'll understand in this world what, what, how it was that time, at that age. So time capsule. Uh, so no one did that with Bhagavad Gita. No one preserved, wanted to preserve it. Kaliuga is there. <laughs> okay, we can say that the, uh, the sages, they were chanting, trying to keep it. Uh, uh, Kaliu came, that's not happening now. But still, we are going and selling this book. And when we speak about Gita, everyone is attracted. Young people are attracted. If it's presented properly, anyway, they come looking and asking, yes, what about Gita? This is a spiritual book. It is under the spiritual energy if it's properly compiled and, com and narrated. And so it's so attractive. So this is not exaggeration. Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Ramayana, even older. Four Divya Yugas ago. That old. It's still there. So this is spiritual literature. Prabhupada says it's not hackneyed. He, he writes very nice revelation about this. Um, he writes here. Oh, I'm in the wrong. It's here. Why is it that this spiritual literature is so powerful? Prabhupada writes here. For example, anyone may read Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam repeatedly throughout his whole life and yet find in them new light of information. Monday news is static, whereas transcendental news is dynamic. 
Okay? In as much as the spirit is dynamic and matter is static. Why is it like that? That spiritual uh, literatures are so exciting and material literatures are not because of the subject matter. The subject matter, uh, Krishna, is full of mellows, raso vai saha. So when we connect, it's so satisfying to hear and discuss. You know, um, Ramanti, Tushantichya Ramanticha, the devotees, Krishna himself said in uh, the summary of Bhagavad Gita in four verses, he said that he spoke about the, his literature and how the devotees relate with it. He said that the pran, the life force of the energy of the devotees, of the devotees, machatya madgata prana, it is all absorbed in him and his narrations. Machatya madgata prana, bodhyanta parasparam, they parasparam sambhutam, bodhyanta parasparam, that they engage in, in uh, hearing about me, discussing about me. Katayansis chamam nityam tu shanti charamanticha and uh, speaking about me, so they become very happy and satisfied. Why aren't normal people satisfied? Non-devotees, they can also be, but they have to remove that covering of maya, which is blocking them. How? Here, sit in here. Then you, uh, that, that covering goes, then again we become happy. So, this is the reason Prabhupada writes that, in as much as spirit is dynamic, matter is static. Because spirit is dynamic. Dynamic means full of flavor and experience. But matter is dead. Matter, wall, brick, car, metal, it's dead. But spirit is full of mellows. And Krishna's name is Chaitanya Rasavigraha, the form of transcendental mellows. That it's alive when we hear, it fully conscious. And we are able to perceive God. We are able not only perceive God, but Rajavidya Prabhupada writes that chanting Hare Krishna is like a seed. Gradually everything will come from Hare Krishna. Just by hearing the name of God, the form of God will manifest, the pastimes, his transcendental qualities. Finally we enter into it. We will be in the pastimes. Even though here, when we are liberated, we are in this material world, but still we are in that Leela. It's going on, we are there and here, till we leave our body and go fully. So it's alive. Subject matter is alive. And therefore, when we discuss it, there's a different energy. The subject matter is different. So anyone who wants to discuss that subject matter, then uh, of matter, material things, then he'll perceive different matter. But if you want to discuss about Krishna, then we come on a spiritual platform. And Prabhupada goes deeper explaining about this. The here, the word is Uttama Shloka, Uttam, Uttama Shloka Vikrame. So Prabhupada writes, Uttama Shloka indicates that literature which is not meant for nescience. Uttama Shloka, Tama means darkness. Uttama is above the darkness, transcendental. Shloke, verses. So that, those literatures or teachings which are above darkness, above matter. Uttama Shloka. So mundane literature is in the mode of darkness or, or ignorance. Whereas transcendental literature is different. Transcendental literature is above darkness, therefore we say Uttama. And its light is more luminous with progressive reading and realization of the transcendental subject matter. Everyone has experience that we'll read a book of Prabhupada, finish it, go to another book, another book, come back to that book. It's different. It's revealing more. Then we read other books, come back, read the same book, it's revealing more. It's not the same. Bhagavad Gita reveals according to our consciousness. Say that, uh, mm, uh, well, how did that Krishna says that I ye yatamam prapadyante tam stateva pajamiyaham. As they surrender to me, so I reward them. How much we are surrendered, and in that surrendered mood, we read Bhagavad Gita, Krishna reveals. Or oh, not much surrendered, not much revelation. Devoted, more devoted to Krishna, deeper, deeper uh, realization. Same thing is when we come before the deity. We come before the deity, the form is made of stone, wood, but we pray to Krishna, he enters in. 
but he reciprocates according to our surrender. So when we come before the deity and we have seven mukhabhav serving and designed to please Vaishnav Guru Krishna, then deity, Krishna, we see the deity and reveal more, much more. And as we advance, we come before the deity, we see more and more and more. We are able to see. And we cannot see Krishna without the seven mukhe. Seven mukhe jiva dao soyam eva surati yada. Surati means he is revealed according to the seven mukhe bhav of the jiva. How much he is inclined to serve God. That's our nature to be servant of God. So now progressively as we go on, the books reveal much more. Deity is more revealing. This is spiritual life, totally different thing. Science of God is a deep subject. It's uh, not what people think. So much is there in the Vedas to understand about God. Artificial. Mm. So now those who are not fortunate, uh, they turn to worldly activities, Philanthropy, it's mentioned here. Altruism, worldly philosophy, that gives some kind of taste. Those who are fortunate, they'll absorb in the Bhagavat. Bhagavat means Bhagavan. They'll absorb in Bhagavan through his teachings, his kirtan, his narrations, his devotees. And that's very satisfying. So satisfying here that the sages, they are telling Shona Sutta Goswami that we never tire of hearing the transcendental pastimes of the Lord, of God, personality of Godhead, who is glorified by hymns and prayers. Those who have developed a taste for transcendental relationships relish him, hearing of him, his pastimes with every moment. If we get the taste, then at every second, every moment, they relish hearing about him, constantly hearing about Krishna. That's only possible for someone who became attracted in devotee. Hare Krishna. Any question? Mm -hmm. yes. When I transform part of Krishna, right? Because he is... Radharani? Part of Krishna. Yeah, that is given in one verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita and even in Brahma Samhita. It's a verse, Nija, yeah, Kala, can't remember the verse, but it's there in Brahma Samhita, that he engages in his pastimes of a form similar to him, expanded from him. And uh, also in, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, it says that Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikritir Hladini Shakti Rasman, the loving affairs of Radha and Krishna are on the Hladini uh, Shakti, on the spiritual level. The happy Hladini uh, Shakti is the pleasure potency. So, Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikritir, Hladini Shakti Rasman. Ekat Mandav Api Bhuvi Pura Deha Bhedam Gatha They were one, they became two. That's correct. That Radhani expanded from Krishna just for pleasure, his pleasure. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai.